friends, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for coming over here again for a fun little conversation about science. So over on my Instagram account, if you guys are not following me over there, then you can. It's Um, Anyway, we I was having a conversation with a few of my friends over there about science and they were just asking me some recommendations about where to begin with their learners. And so I thought I would show you guys some of the things that I have used and just some overall opinion about the subject of science in homeschool. So let's go ahead and get started. Started. <laughs> All right, so first and foremost, um, I just wanna share with you guys my opinion about science. I started in the same boat that many of you guys probably did when I was having this conversation over on Instagram. Um, my feelings really resonated with what the, they were feeling because I was there, that's how I started as well. And that was this feeling of like, I want to make sure that I'm teaching my kids the same things and the level and all of the subject areas that they're supposed to. And in my public school history, I don't exactly remember what there was about science, except maybe like chemistry class and being able to use like the little fire burner thing every once in a while and um, combining elements. <laughs> I kind of remember that little like unit where we were learning about how to like move units from one side of the equation to another, which I couldn't even tell you how to do now, but I remember at the time that's what science is. And and so when I transferred into this like homeschool space, I was immediately overwhelmed with, well, what, like, what do you teach your child for science? And when my son went into third grade last year, I felt an enormous weight of, please make sure that I get the subject right. I don't wanna mess up science. And then 2020 happened, and if you know our story, we packed up everything, sold our house, and traveled for the majority of our school year. And then the second half of our school year, we lived in a basement. So we didn't have any of the things that I'm usually accustomed to having in our school life. And that really made me reevaluate education and how I approach our homeschool year. And um, some things have been a great change and other things I missed and I will go back to, but science is one of those subjects where I feel like I really learned a lot about. And I went from this headspace of what are the check boxes and what are the subject areas that this particular grade level is gonna be covering to a much more like experience-based science world and just experiencing what's going on around us. And I guess it's a little unschooly of me to be stepping more away from a textbook foundation, but um, it also is very liberating, I guess. And so our upcoming school year is going to have a lot more freedom in science than we've had in the past. But that's not where I started, nor is it where I recommend you start if you're feeling like you don't know where to go with science. There are tremendous resources, so that's what I wanna share with you guys today, is that the world is full of science, and the study of science is just exploring and understanding the world that we're in, and that's everything from the plants and the animals to the rocks and the you know metals and, and um, chemical reactions and why things happen the way that they do. Um, it's There's just such a huge umbrella that, um, that goes underneath science. But um, I do understand the world of wanting to make sure you check off the boxes. So much so, in fact, that in our fourth grade year, although we do have a very fluid and unit-based study, I still have books that I'm gonna be using with my students. So let me show you some of the books that I have used. Um, so that you can kind of get an idea of where you want to go, okay? So first and foremost, um, it's an actual textbook. So this is third grade. This is from BJU Press. And BJU Press is not the only place that you can go to. That's just the one that I chose for our third grade year. Um, but there are other companies you can do something like this from. So, you know, pick your poison, whether it's Horizons or Abeka. They have some really great science stuff as well. Um, or any of the other ones that I'm gonna show you in a minute. But what I will, this is what I do, is I get the book 
and turn to the table of contents, which is gonna be right here. And these, sometimes I even do this on the computer before I even order the resource. And then these are the subjects that third graders in at least BJU Press World are gonna be studying. And then from here, you can build out some kind of fun unit study if you wanna learn about cold-blooded animals. Well, that's pretty fun and easy and exciting and warm-blooded animals and figure out what the difference between those are. The benefit of purchasing an actual text like this is that you can then sit down and begin your study with just some content, right? And sometimes reading the content this is what I used to tell my history students back when I taught history in high school. I would always start the school year by saying, there's three ways, three ways that you can learn history. One, you can read it. Two, I can tell it to you. So, you know, through lectures or lesson plans. And three, you can experience it, right? By going to either a museum or having some kind of whatever, if you go to like those living museums or a festival of some kind, right? And unfortunately in public school, the experience portion of it is pretty much cut out. So there's two ways that you can learn something. I either tell it to you or you read it yourself. And that's kind of an approach with a lot of subjects, science being one of them, right? There's one way that you can learn science is either I can tell it to you or you can read it. So here we are, we're gonna just read about the ecosystem of what? Balancing an ecosystem. Oh, this was a fun unit. I remember when we did the games with this. Anyway, and it just gives you some content. Um, if you would like to purchase like the teacher manual, then you'll get activity ideas or maybe an activity page that you can do with it. This particular science book did come with, um, with actual like science. Here's one page. Science um, activities that you can do. So here we were learning about friction and, you know, in your brain, like, especially this is another like common topic that you'll hear me say a lot when I'm conversing to new homeschoolers is that your brain will eventually start thinking of ways to teach something. So even though it's not written in the text, you'll start see, to think like, oh, well, let's see what a ball will do if we roll it down the driveway. And now let's see what will happen if we try to roll it down the hill on the grass. Well, and then you'll just start thinking like, well, what if we did it on the tan bark over by the playground? And what if we did it down the slide? So you start to recognize the world around you and then you can expand on those activities, okay? So this is one option. This is, I've used BJU Press. Now I will say this as a side note, is that we have done BJU Press, um, the video distance learning, and we stepped away from it about, halfway through the school year because I really felt like it was so textbook for lack of a better word, right? History should be exper history. Science should be experienced. Science should be explored. Science, science should be fun and, and explorational. And when I was watching it on the video, although the teacher was very engaging and the content was there, I just felt like it was very textbook. And that's what like a brick and mortar school would have to do. That's not what my public or my, my homeschool experience needs to look like. So I would not recommend getting a digital, like a distance learning module if you can help it and to actually experience it with some of these other resources that I'll show you here, okay? So this is number one. Um, a second option, we'll do all of these here together. So this is um, an interactive notebook. I went through a huge phase where I was a huge fan of interactive notebooks. And although, you know, as a homeschool teacher, your favorites kind of ebb and flow. So, so I went from this to another thing and now I'm into something else, but this is still something fun. I love to go back to, and I'm going to do it with my kindergarten in and out this year. But this is a book, this is by Carson DeLosa. And you can just go like start on page one and go to the end of the book, right? Or you can just pick and choose. Let me go to the table of contents here and I'll show you, okay? So here in the table of contents, um, it has like all of the different types of sciences and then each of the activities that go with it. And you can easily just like use YouTube as a secondary resource to this and just type in, um, for example, this first one is my body's five senses. Then just type in my five senses for kids or, um, touch and taste for kids. 
hear and smell for kids. And you get this really awesome, like tons of good content that you can pick from. Please preview all of the YouTube videos before you like sit down with your kiddo and just watch something because you just want to make sure that the content that they are sharing aligns with what you want your kids to be learning. But um, they're just really cute activities. And once again, like you couple this with other activities, like we're learning about animal habitats in this particular one. Oh, that's interesting. Here in grade three, we were reading about animal habitats that I was just showing you as an example, right? So they all correspond with each other. And as I've been like journeying through my homeschool journey, my oldest is now going into fourth grade. I still notice in science in particular that all of the subjects are kind of repetitive. They just add on to it. I mean, we've been learning about habitats since kindergarten and then in third grade, habitats again, but you just are adding onto it. And now we're talking about how they depend on each other and one thing or another, but that's not something you cannot talk about with your kindergartner sitting next to you. You've just now raised the level to your older child. So that's the great thing about science. Okay, another great book that we have used. This is called God Made Animals, and I am going to be doing a whole animal study this year. Um, it's going to be for marine biology or marine animals. Anyway, who makes this? I don't even know. Oh, Generations. This is a Generations book, and um, it's just it's just about animals, right? But this is a book that you can just like throw out and be like, all right, let's do, learn a little something. This is just a super fun way to talk about animals and then from something will catch your students attention and you'll notice it as your mom as the parent right away you know as the mom or dad and you'll be able to build on that they'll they'll be super interested and then again go to youtube and you type in butterflies for kids or butterfly life cycles what is this one i don't even know but oh god awe inspiring design for bird function how did how birds fly for kids right um, and now you're getting into a little bit of like aerodynamics. Okay, there's one other thing that I was gonna show you and I don't think I have it here, but let me look. Oh, it's right here. Okay, so this is what we did last year for science. <laughs> if you can believe it, it's falling apart. But this is the draw right now. And the one that I had that we did was, um, was like the lake and ponds habitats, but it's really great. So you draw something like it has this little blurb. We're learning about hens. They live on farms. They eat seeds, they lay eggs and they have baby chicks. And then there's like this little like, um, explanation or whatever, how to actually draw it. And for each of those things. So we, again, we did like lakes and ponds, which I don't know where that book is, but we did like, um, the eel. So then we learned about the eel and how the eel has these interesting migration patterns and, the salmon is different than the eel where the salmon goes to spawn in the rivers or salt water, fresh water, but then goes back to the salt water. Anyway, it was so interesting. And that whole, all of that learning, we did that for like two months straight. We did a different page every day in this and we created this these cute little like drawing books and there was some handwriting in there. My older student did a little more handwriting. We did a little like research stuff. It was so like gentle and and explorative and yet super interesting. Like we all learned something and it was really cool. So this was another resource I wasn't planning on showing you, but try the draw right now. And they even have draw right now um, in cursive, but I'm pretty sure those are all like more history-based learning. But these first one, this one is, what is this one even called? This is book one, the farms one. And then I'm pretty sure that the lakes and rivers one might be book two, but I might be making that up. Okay, my last little blurb about science is going to be um, Evan Moore. And I get a lot of conversation got a lot of conversations over on my Instagram page. People ask a lot of questions about Evan Moore. If you are new to my channel, I am a huge advocate of Evan Moore. I love what they offer. Their price tag is perfect. So I got a lot of Evan Moore. I got a lot of Evan Moore stuff in all subject areas. We do a bunch of supplemental work with Evan Moore. So let me show you what I have for Evan Moore. And then I'll tell you if Evan Moore is the direction that you want to go, let me tell you what I recommend you do, okay? Because they have a lot of stuff. So Evan Moore has two ways of doing something. They have color, 
and not color. <laughs> and I always defer to a colorful book over a non-color book. That doesn't mean I don't buy their black and white books, but um, just know that without fail, if you're gonna only choose one Evan Moore book for your subject area, I'm going to recommend going with Skill Sharpeners and a color version because that's what I love. But um, here's some options. So this is called Daily Science, and I'm actually using Daily Science this year, but we will not be doing it every day. Now, it's intended to be done Monday through Friday. They're very short lessons that all fall under a cohesive unit or umbrella during the week. And um, they call those big ideas. And I think that there are six, yeah. So this particular one is grade four, and I'm pretty sure that they all follow the same pattern, but it, it has a big idea, and that's like your big science unit, and then they break those up into four weeks, or five, five weeks, and each one kind of falls under that umbrella, right? So here's how they lay it out. You have the big idea and here's a bunch of weak information. This is like an open and go option for you and it's very um, cohesive. No, it's very inclusive. It's going to get everything that your student needs. So if you're in the camp of like, I don't wanna miss anything and I don't know science, this is a great option for you because it's going to cover in a, you know, flow of first this, then this, then this, okay? So here's how they lay it out for you as the teacher. It's gonna say, here's your teacher background, just read the information. And something that I always say, if you're new here, is that you don't need to know it to teach it, right? You just have to be one day ahead of everybody else and as of your students. And when I taught high school, I was assigned to teach world history and I literally didn't know anything when I was going into it. I was like, well, show me the book and I'll read the chapter and then I'll figure it out. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do this coming year for my kiddo for science, okay? So then it's, um, so what are we learning here? Um, plants and animals depend on each other and their environment for survival. Can we pause for a half a second here? Guys, this is unplanned. What did I, what book did I just show you? Right here. When we were looking at this book, back with the hawks, I'm never gonna find the same page, but we were just talking about how um, the habitat has to, depends on each other. That was grade three in here, okay? Remember when I was showing you this book, what was the page about? Habitats. Okay, like we're studying the same thing every single year, got it? So don't be intimidated by science because you're just learning different things in a different way, like just kind of shining a light in a different corner of that area. And habitats are so cool to learn about. Like who doesn't want to find out about why beavers build dams? That's interesting, right? Just don't, this is my only, my only, I think I've said that 12 times. Don't get so like, caught up in teaching your student that you miss the fun of science. Don't get so caught up in reading the text and filling out the work page that you miss it. Like read about why beavers build dams and then watch a video on YouTube and then go in the yard and find a bunch of sticks and see if you can figure it out, right? Like there's just so many fun things that, that can come with homeschool if you step outside of that box of the brick and mortar school room, okay? All right, wow, that was a tangent, but here we go. So it's just gonna show you, here is the, the reading option, and then, sorry. <laughs> here is the reading option, and then you're gonna have some additional work that you can do with your student, okay? So this is something that I actually am gonna do with my kiddo, but, you know, spoiler alert, we're gonna be doing unit studies this year. And so I will grab some of the content from this daily science book and build it into our unit study. All right, option number two, this is a grade one book. They have them for up through grade six. This is called Lessons and Investigation. And it's kind of built in a similar way, but my, my issue with it is that it is not in color and I, usually shy away from that because I just Im like imagine how beautiful this picture would be with the blue sky and the white cloud and the green grass and the brown bark. I just feel sad and like the flower and the fruit are these apples I'm pretty sure. I can't tell because there's no color. 
Um, it just makes me feel like I'm missing something because it doesn't have that color in it. Now the content is sound. There's amazing content here and your student will get a great education and your mentor or that third party group that you have to submit portfolios to will be satisfied with what your student is doing in this work. But here we're learning about parts of a plant, but it has content that you can read. Again, there's two ways to learn it. You either read it or I tell it to you, right? And it has your activities as well. So we're learning about parts of a plant here. That's another really fun unit to do with science. And um, this isn't my all time favorite, but it's the, the content is sound. And if you're like, I don't know where to go, this is a great place because it's going to have both your lesson material and your investigation. Whereas this one, it's kind of the same. It has lots of lesson, but it's just a lot more like shorter because this is intended for one day. So, you know, each day is gonna have like kind of a little bit different content. Okay, so those are those two. This is a book that I just did a whole video on. This is the STEM and different from their previous versions, STEM. Okay, do you see the difference? This one is S-T-E-M, S-T-E-A-M. Do not be confused. I prefer this E-A-M because it has the art portion included in it. Um, these are real life problems that you find the solution to. It's really interesting um, topics and then they also like correlate it with really fun things to do. For example, you have a, um, like a cleanup crew is one of the things they talk about when they're talking about trash and um, pollution or whatever, and you have to design like a logo on your shirt, I think, for the like group. Anyway, it's just super cute. So this is a fun one. I can't really speak too much to it because I haven't physically done it, but I have, you know, looked through it and I've done a review on it. And so um, this is grade three and it's just got some cute ideas. So this is something that I feel like if you're feeling stuck in the curriculum that you've picked, you're like, Ugh, if I have to read about one more plant, you know, whatever, then this is something really fun to have like on the back shelf that you can be like, let's just push this to the side or whatever it is that you're using and let's do something a little bit different. And this is a great way to do it, right? Where you're gonna be doing something a little more interactive with your students and still cover a nice, you know, science unit that'll make all of the people that need to know you're doing science even your own like homeschooling heart, right? Okay, this is the last one. Again, this is their skill sharpeners thing. Um, this is a level, oh, this is grade one. And um, I love skill sharpeners. Are you new here? Can I tell you? I love their units. They go from kindergarten, excuse me, they go from preschool up through grade six and they cover all of your subject areas. And they are done in chunks. So each color, you can kind of see they're color coded here. Each color is a different unit. And I've ripped out a bunch of pages in this book. So it's not complete right now um, because we did a lot of it last year. But here you're learning about seasons. And it really combines all different types of learning, both recognition as well as like an interactive where you're going to be like cutting and pasting. There's reading that's involved. This is the art project with it. I do something similar to this. I have my own like seasons thing that I've done year after year after year with my preschoolers. Every year they come in, I'm like, time to do it again because I just love it. But this is a good, you know, fast and easy way just with paint and some construction paper. Um, so I am a huge fan of skills sharpeners. Now, that being said, if you are new to the science world and you have a third grader or a fourth grader or a first grader for that matter, and you're like starting to feel a little bit anxious about wanting to ensure that you cover all the science that they need for their grade level, may I first encourage you to write an affirmation out <laughs> that says, we, we don't need to cover everything in one year because you get to cover it over and over and over again every year. Science is supposed to be fun, it's explorative and it's inquisitive. And those are characteristics that children already come have. They, they've got it in, their, in them to inquire and to want to know and to question. And that's what science gets to explore is how does a caterpillar become a butterfly? And 
how do plants grow and why do they have leaves and all of the fun, good things that the earth has to offer us. So that being said, I would recommend skill sharpeners, hands down, left and right. Skill sharpeners for me is not long enough to cover the entire year. So I would do skill sharpeners. And then when this wraps up, then I would pick something like this. Um, or I would even, well, and the draw right now, oh, my kids loved doing that last year. Okay. The draw right now, this is what I would recommend you go to, because if you pick too many of these like work worksheet based learning, then it just drives the fun right out of science and you lose the magic of it. And that's where I was. I say that because that's what I experienced is now that we're going into grade four for my oldest, I'm finally starting to open up a different book and be like, there's a world outside my front door that's far more exciting to learn about than it is just to read about it in this very textbook based learning style. So there is a space for textbook based learning. I'm not saying to push that to the side. However, in the case of science, it can be so much more explorative than I feel like I walked into it when I first started my homeschooling life. So whatever portion of the journey that you are for you, whether this is your first year or your first month or your seventh year or in 17th year, you know, science is meant to be enjoyed and it's easy to do if you approach it with the right tools and the right attitude. So I don't know if this was helpful for you. Hopefully some of my resources sparked some interest for you. I will put a description, uh, a link in the description box below for the Evan Moore science resources. Um, I, I could put the Carson DeLosa one. These draw right now are on like christianbook.com. They're way cheaper there than on Amazon. Do not buy them on Amazon. You'll pay an extra 10 bucks a piece. Um, and then this one is gonna be through like BJU. I'm not gonna put this down in the link below, but you know, you can get that pretty much from anywhere, so. And then this one was a fun one actually from Generations, but okay, those are my, my little tips that I wanted to share with you guys. So, um, there you go. Click the description box and see if one of those links help you. Share this video with someone that may be struggling with science. If you found it valuable, maybe it'll help them out. And if you're new, go ahead and subscribe and follow along in our journey here on our side of the mountain. Have a good one, guys.